Um, today I'm going to be teaching you some of my favorite techniques for dodging and burning your images in Photoshop. So a quick update, I will be releasing a night sky and Milky Way tutorial with my friend Gavin aka Photo Tripper and we're pretty excited about it. It's going to be hours of awesome editing and night sky shooting and we have some pretty awesome vlogs to go along with it so make sure to stay tuned for that. Before we get started real quick, I'm going to be using this. This is a Wacom tablet. It's really great for scribbling and drawing and takes a little while to get used to, but once you get used to editing your images this way, you're not going to want to go back to a trackpad or to your mouse. So I'm going to be using this. And let's go ahead and dive in. Okay. So I've got this image from New Zealand, super fun shoot. And the first thing I like to do before I dodge and burn or really post-process any image is see what would help to accentuate the composition. There's a few things that catch my eye right now. I think I'm gonna darken this area on the right side, maybe darken a little bit of these areas on the edges of the frame where you have these brighter highlights that are catching attention. I'm going to dodge the water and bring out some of the shapes and textures in the water. And then the big thing that really catches my eye is this little bright spot on the rock. So I'm gonna show you a few different techniques for working on this image. Then we're gonna go into this photograph right here to work on some dodging here around the sun and around the ridge line. One of the ways I like to dodge and burn is just to create a new layer right down here by the trash can. All right, so I'm gonna set this to soft light and I'm gonna brush on with white to increase the brightness value. Now, if I brush on this layer without a blend mode, it's just gonna paint on the image with white and it's gonna look really noticeable. Soft light's a nice blend mode that lets some of that light through, but not all of it. We're also gonna use the blend mode overlay and I'll show you that in a second. Let's name this Dodge. And I'm going to use a fairly low opacity. I usually like to use 5 to 10%. I'm going to try and brush a little bit extra just so it's really noticeable for this tutorial. And with my pen, I'm going to just start doing a little bit of dodging to these falls. Now, of course, if you're doing this for your own image, make sure to be really selective. If you go overboard, you can always change the opacity of your layer. Like sometimes I'll brush too much and just change the opacity to 50. Let's go with a lower opacity here. brush along the main part of the waterfall. And what I'm doing here is rather than brushing with a high opacity and just brushing once, I'm just kind of scribbling on the tablet. I'm tapping and scribbling and that helps your brush strokes to blend in a little bit more. If I was to just do a large opacity and brush once, it's going to be really, really noticeable. And let's use a nice bigger soft brush. We can just kind of do some overall brushing in here. Again, I'm going to change the opacity down a little bit. All right, so let's see what that looks like. So a pretty big difference and I'll show you what that looks like on the normal blend mode. So of course there's normal and you can really see the brush strokes there. Now if I take this back to soft light, now you'll notice once I switch to overlay, it's going to really increase the contrast of this selection. It's really going to pop the highlights. So let's move over to overlay. 
and overlay does give a really nice punchy effect so if you like that effect you can use overlay sometimes it might be a little too strong and then of course we can just take down our opacity now of course we can go to another layer name this one burn and since before we were brushing on white to increase the brightness value we are going to brush on with black to decrease the brightness value I recommend only using soft light for your burn layer. I find that overlay is just a little too contrasty for dealing with shadows. And I always, for my burn layers, use a bigger brush. And I'm just going to brush along this edge. Kind of creating my own custom vignette here and brush along that area that was catching too much attention. All right, that looks good. So that's your basics of dodging and burning with white and black and on a blend mode. Now I'm going to teach you another way of dodging and burning that can be a little bit more selective and I like to use both of these techniques for my photographs. Sometimes I'll use these dodge and burn layers and then other times I'll use a curves adjustment. So let's head down here to our adjustments, go to curves, brief explanation of what a curves adjustment does. If we take down this curve we're going to decrease the brightness. If we bring up this curve we're going to increase the brightness. And all of our shadows are located here on the left side of the curve, mid-tones in the middle, highlights on the right side. So if we pull this down, we're pulling down the brightest highlights in the photograph. If we pull the shadows up, we're going to increase the shadows. And if we increase the curve, so if we bring up the highlights here, decrease the shadows here, we're actually going to add more contrast into the photograph. So what I'm going to do here is find a nice bit of contrast for these trees. I think this actually looks pretty good. I'm going to tweak this adjustment a little bit. And right now we have a mask. The mask is all white, so everything this curves adjustment is doing is shining through to the rest of the layers. Now if we switch that mask to black, it is going to exclude everything that the curves adjustment is doing. Black is to exclude, white is to reveal. So if we do control I on PC, command I on Apple, we've now excluded everything that curves adjustment is doing. It's all black. And what we want to do is paint on with white to reveal little areas that we want to showcase and highlight. So with white, I'm just going to brush along this tree line. And just to really punch it up, I'm going to increase the opacity. You can even use this to brush a little bit on the water. Let's see what that did. So it gives quite a bit more contrast in the highlights on the foliage, a little bit more on the water. Let's do one more curves adjustment. This time we're going to target the highlights down here in the shadow area. So another curves adjustment. And right now I'm going to take down the brightest highlights in the adjustment. Now again, invert the mask and paint on with white to reveal. So I'm going to paint down here where that rock is catching a little bit of light. Take down the opacity a bit.
And when you're dodging and burning, it's just important to think about what are the areas that you want to highlight, where are the areas that you want the viewer to look, and where are the areas that you don't really want the viewer to look. So I don't need people looking at these little highlights on the trees right on the edge of the frame, so I can darken those so that they become less noticeable. All right, so quite a big difference there. Here's what we did to the overall photograph. Pretty quick edit here. Make sure you're being really selective when you're doing this to your own photograph. You can zoom in to 100% and get those little fine details with the pen. So this is an example of just regular diffused light. There's not a lot of direction to this light. And when you're dodging and burning, it's also really important to think about direction of light, similar to when you're shooting. When you're shooting, you're always looking at the, the quality of the light and the direction. So here is another example. This is a lot different from the previous in that we have the sun in the frame. And you'll notice when we look at the sun, we've got this pretty harsh edge between the specular highlight and this little area that has more dynamic range. We can use a little bit of dodging and burning to help us to blend that area. Looks like my horizon was crooked. I'll have to fix that later. Um, but we can <laughs> dodge this area a little bit, give a little bit of glow to the sun, and it'll help that to blend more. We can also dodge in these ridges. And the thing is with dodging and burning, you don't just have to use black and white. You can actually use a color. So in here, I'm gonna use my eyedropper tool and I'm gonna select a color from the photograph. That looks good. When you're choosing your color, just make sure not to go too saturated or too dull. I like to stick right around here. I guess that's like the one fourth or one third mark. Click okay. We should probably make a new layer Let's do soft light dodge. I'm going to take the opacity down just a bit. And let's just brush along here. Sometimes it's nice if there's a ridge line that's super dark right next to the sun, you can add just a little bit of glow there where the light would be kind of shining. And of course, if you've found that you've gone too far, let's, for example, go a little too far with it. we can always change the opacity to make the effect more subtle. We can also use for the areas around the sun that we are getting that specular highlight, we can kind of just take the normal blend mode with a similar color right next to the sun, very low opacity, and just kind of brush along there to blend those highlights. So if we zoom in here, that's kind of what we're doing to the sun. So do multiple passes, use multiple layers. Um, don't just use one, do a few with different blend modes um, to see what's going to really help that area and what you want to do to the photograph. Now let's work on this ridge line. So I'm gonna make, I should probably name this again, sun layer. So this time I'm gonna use overlay to give a lot more pop and contrast to this ridge line. That should be good. Let's also find another color in here. So we've kind of got that nice peachy color, but of course this is too dark. We want to dodge, so we want to brighten that up. 
And I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush for this as well. And again, when you're working on your own, own images, just take time, maybe zoom in to make sure that you're hitting the right area with the light. And I think it's important, definitely think about the direction of light, think about the quality. Like it wouldn't make a lot of sense if I added a bunch of glow to the edge of the frame here, or for example, if the sun wasn't in the frame and I just started glowing out the horizon, would it make a lot of sense because there's no light source there to actually produce the dodging effect that you're creating. But in this case, we already have this nice bit of light hitting the ridge, so it makes a lot of sense to just brighten that up. All right, so there's a nice dodge. So that is how to dodge and burn in Photoshop. I really hope you found this video helpful. This is what I do for pretty much all of my own photographs. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I'll be releasing a bunch of new tutorials. If you have any suggestions of what you might like to see in the future, leave them in the comments. And if you enjoyed it, please leave me a thumbs up. It helps a lot. Thanks so much again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.